But we did not have this, <laughs> we did not have this edge before. Right? Uh, I use knives in my garden. I'm an avid outdoors person. I use them out in the woods and when I'm fishing and stuff like that. And I also, of course, uh, I like to use, uh, you know, keep my knives nice and sharp in my kitchen. So uh, I thought I'd do a video on that because people were asking. Now there's lots of videos online about how to sharpen knives. So there's not a lot I have to add in terms of technique. Um, but what I do have to add because, uh, because of just how I tend to come at things is a pr pretty cheap, easy way to do it. Because I, I like to pride myself on the cheap, easy ways I've figured out how to do things. So. Here I've got a way to sharpen knives. I'm, I'm going to talk about two techniques. I'm going to show you one, and one is just an example of the other. I'm going to try to keep the video short. There's going to be some things I talk about here require a whole video to explain, so in the interest of keeping the video short, I'm going to leave those out as well. My mon one beef with most knife sharpening videos is that they tend to uh, focus on uh, using sharpening stones, very expensive sharpening stones, and you can't just have one. You've got to have more than one, right? So these sets. And uh, if, sure, you can put an exquisite edge on a knife using sharpening stones. Uh, with, you know, of course, if you don't know what you're doing, it's not going to matter. <laughs> it takes practice. Um, so even if you plan to buy the expensive sharpening stones, you're going to want to learn the techniques using what I'm going to show you here because it's cheap. And you might just find that what I'm showing you works just fine and you don't need to go to all that expense. I mean, it's very, if you take care of your, your knives, you don't, you don't need to put a new edge on them all the time. All, what you're doing most of the time is just honing them up which is, you know, just when you use a sharpening steel or a strop, that sort of thing. The thing is, if you're going to buy um, expensive sharpening stones, you can't just have one. You have to have one of every grit. Some of them might be two-sided like this one. But on top of that, you have to be able to, um, when you're using these to sharpen knives, okay, you're, you're, you're going to try to be even all the way across, but you're not. You're going to basically tend to put the most pressure near the center of the stone. So over time, the stone's going to get sort of rounded out. The surface isn't going to be perfectly flat. It's going to get rounded. So to, to counteract that, you have another stone that's the same, and you rub them together, and that'll re-true the stones. So for every stone you buy, you got to buy another stone. So it gets very expensive. And there's a much cheaper way to do this. And I'm sure there's other videos on this online. Um, but that is you, you buy these uh, kits. You can get these at an automotive section of a hardware store. Uh, this isn't really a kit, this is just 400 grit, but often you can get a package like this and it's got maybe um, a couple 200s, a couple 400 grits, a couple 600 grits, right? It's got an assortment in it. And from these you know, sheets, sh sheets of sandpaper, you, you cut out basically strips that are about the size of a sharpening stone. You glue them on to a nice flat piece of wood, <laughs> right? And then you can just use them as you need them. And you'll get multiple sharpenings out of one of these. Of course, every time you use it, if you're using it really heavily, it gets a little bit finer. So maybe if you have a, a 400 grit one. So I think this was a 600 a number of years ago. Um, but it's probably more like a thousand now because it's been used so many times. You can, you can barely feel whoop, You can barely feel anything, but yeah, you're on your nails. You can feel a bit of grit, but this has been used many times on many knives. So it's very fine. It's still good for honing, right? Very, you know, just extremely fine surface now. So they last a while and they, they change over time, but they still become useful. So, you know, that's a cheap way to do it. And you, the main thing is to get a piece of wood that's perfectly flat and perfectly smooth and perfectly straight. And uh, there's lots of different kinds of wood you can use for that. Um, I found that, uh, you know, a piece of MDF is a pretty just a, just the kind of thing they sell in a hardware store is trim. You can stick even you got a, I got a small car, you can fit this in a car if you put the back seat down. So they, they usually sell them in like six, seven, eight feet long pieces. Um, but it's perfectly, it's not real wood, it's basically like uh, some sort of combination of cross between cardboard and wood. Um, but it's it's perfectly straight, perfectly flat because it's not real wood, right? Um, so it's ideally suited to this sort of thing. It's got a bit of weight. It's got enough uh, dimension that you can slap it into a vise to hold it in place, right? So it's got that nice uh, aspect to it. And you're using the wet, dry sandpaper, right? So that you can, you know, uh, put, put water on it, right? And as you're working your knife across it, you get what they call a slurry, a bit of, 
uh, almost like a kind of fine mud that's made of a combination of particles of the sandpaper breaking down and little bits of metal. And that's, that's what puts that exquisite edge on your knife, right? So, if you're going to... I, I got a bunch of... I got a knife here that I need to sharpen. So, this knife here is... A, I got it um, on um, eBay. It's a little pocket knife. And uh, I noticed, how do you tell if a knife has a, a decent edge? You get a piece of uh, a paper, right? And you, you, you cut the paper. And it should just cut off like that. Right? That sort of thing. Right? There's a... And all these knives are cheap. This was a $7 knife. Right? The one I just cut that with was a $17 knife. Here's a $7 knife I got on eBay. Right? Exquisite edge. Nice and sharp. No problem. Right? Here's a knife I tend to take out in the woods with me. Sort of like a hunting, fishing, general, general purpose sort of outdoors person knife, but they call it more a knife. $20 knife. Sharp, right? Um, I'm not trying to show off here. I'm just trying to explain that you don't need to spend $200 on a knife to have a nice edge. Um, now here's the... Uh, let's get a fresh piece of paper. Here's the, uh, the pocket knife I just got. Oh, geez, it's actually not cutting too bad. But trust me, it's it's not. I, mean, I have to be very careful. If I try to... Oh, <laughs> how can it make it a liar of me? Anyway, it is... It, believe, believe me, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's not, it's not reliable, it's not consistent, it's not cutting, right? It doesn't have as good an edge as those other ones. So it needs some work, and in this video I'm going to put an edge on this, and I'm going to walk through all the steps. So, look at that. So using these, i got different grits. This is 120 grit, really coarse. This one's 400 grit. This one's 600 grit. Right? So what you would do is you'd you know get, get a bit of water on the sandpaper. Right. Like that. That's just like a sharpening stone. And just work your way across, right? Now with, with any knife you want to um, uh, find the right angle to hold the blade at. You're not holding it perfectly flat and you're not holding it 90 degrees right, you're holding it somewhere in between. Um, for a lot of knives the rule of thumb is that the back of the knife should be up um, a dime's width. Just the width of a dime, basically. Less than a millimeter, right? And if you have it on that slight angle, it'll put an edge on it. But, but every knife's different, and that's all about, um, you know, bevels and grinds and all that sort of stuff. It's a whole other video in and of itself. Generally speaking, the point is that, you know, the actual edge of the knife has an angle that's slightly different than the, the actual there's the plane of the blade and there's the actual edge of the knife it's a different angle so you have to follow that angle when you're you know running it across the um, sandpaper to to keep that true now it takes practice I wouldn't learn to do this using an expensive knife I'd get some um, cheap knife and, and work from there I actually you know for the purpose of this video <laughs> I bought a uh, a chef's knife. They had these chef knives at the dollar store that were four bucks. Like this. And I bought this knife to sharpen it on this video. I decided for four bucks, that's no big deal. Look at the edge on this thing. <laughs> four dollar knife. <laughs> I got no work to do here. This thing's perfect. This is an amazing knife for four bucks. <laughs> dollar store. Anyway. Uh, so, kind of amazed at that. So, so that's how you do that. You, you work the knife on that slight angle, back and forth, methodically, taking your time, until it starts to feel sharp. Till it starts to, using the 120, till it seems to want to cut. And we're kind of getting close to it here now, right? I'll admit, I was, I was working this knife a little bit before the video. Actually, this is my third take filming this video. <laughs> I wasn't happy with the other two, so I, I've worked this knife a little bit on this today. It was much worse before I started. Um, anyway, we're still not there yet. Um, but anyway, you're going to keep doing that over and over and over again until it's behaving the way you want with the paper. And then once you get it to that, you graduate to the 400 grit. Right? I'm doing the same thing. 
holding that little dime of width angle. You can really feel the metal, or the, uh, I can feel the sandpaper biting into the metal. Right, so on and so forth. You just keep going like that. And over and over and over again. Right, and then once you get it to where you want with the 400, you go to the 600. Right. You can hold the knife flat against here just to clean it up a little bit. If you got a knife that's got some, you just saw me do that earlier, so I gotta explain what I was doing. Um, if the actual plane of the blade it's got stains or rust or imperfections. Just just hold it flat against the uh, surface and rub rub it up and down. That'll clean it off really good, right? Now some people will say 600 grit isn't fine enough, but you can pretty darn close to put a mirror finish on a knife with 600. Anyway, you go with the 600. Again, same thing, back and forth, right? Until you've got you know a fantastic edge. Still not there because I'm not going to do it this way today. I'm going to show you. So this is a good way to do it, and I've done it this way before. And this is the way I, I used to do knives until I, because um, this is the way I was shown to do it. But basically, just mimicking the approach with the stones, right? Um, but I mean, this is the 21st century, and we have these things called power tools, <laughs> and some of them you can get pretty inexpensively. And actually, both the ones I'm going to show you I here I got in yard sales. I got a vibrator sander, five bucks. And I got a belt sander, which are usually expensive, but I got this for 15 bucks at a yard sale. Both of them were broken. The on-off switch wasn't working. Not a hard fix. So, um, for, yeah, for both of them, like this vibrator sander here. You can see this, this is where the on-off switch assembly was. And so I just, uh, I sort of took it apart and hardwired it in, in the on setting. Then I just attach this switch here. And get one of these things for like $3.99 at a hardware store. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> um, so, let me take you over to the tool bench here. And, and the whole point is that, yes, um, power tools cost money. But if you go and buy the ones that are being recommended in a lot of these videos, the expensive Japanese whetstones, that they're, you know, you have to have like a set of three... Right? And even then you still have to have a strop and you still have to have a, some kind of hone after all of that. Um, if you go and do that, that's going to cost more than these two power tools combined. And the power tools are multifunctional. <laughs> you can do lots of different things with them. So you're getting a multitasking tool instead of a thing that just does one thing. And it's fast. It's really fast. <laughs> Saves you a lot of time and aggravation. So come on over, let's go to the power tools. Alright, so here's a, a belt sander that I got at a yard sale for about 15 bucks. And uh, like my vibrator sander, the on off switch was smashed. So I just wired them together with a couple Moret connectors. And uh, so it's basically always on. So to turn this on, I plug it in. And to turn it off, I unplug it. <laughs> right? Pretty low tech, but uh, works fine. Right? Um, so, um, and this is the, this is the uh, belt that came with it. I don't know what grit this was. Originally, I would say this is probably about a 120 grit from the looks of things. Um, so this is the, the belt that came with it. And uh, I bought this the year I bought this house. So 2011. I'm still using the same belt, still using the same belt sander. I've used it for lots of different things, but it's... You know, once you get the hang of it, it's great for sharpening a knife. i got to say, it's great for sharpening a knife. And there's going to be people that uh, uh, gawk at this, oh, the purists and so on and so forth. Uh, I could care less. I mean, it's a question of how quickly... So I come in here, I got a knife that isn't sharp, I don't like the edge. Let's say I'm working in the kitchen and, you know, one of my... I, you know, really you only have to sharpen a knife this way, maybe once every year, maybe once every two or three years, depending on what you're using it for and how you take care of it and how you maintain it. Um, so if I'm in the kitchen and I don't like the way one of my knives is performing, and I've noticed it even when I, you know, honed it up, you know, using... This is a hone, use one of these things, right? That it's not cutting the way I'm used to. Everything should just slide through like a lightsaber, right? No resistance. Um, I'll come down here and five or ten minutes later, it's it's good to go. Yeah, so all I do, I'm just going to explain this before I turn it on. The same idea as using the wooden block. You put it flat on the uh, sanding surface and then you just tip it up a little bit. Just enough so that you could like get a dime underneath it. 
you know, every knife is different. It depends on what kind of uh, secondary bevel or primary bevel or, or, you know, what kind of grind it has for the edge. Again, that's another, that's, that's technical terminology, but for a, a pocket knife like this, that's all you got to do is put it flat and then bring it up like a dime's width sort of thing. And that's enough to put a good, uh, right kind of edge on it. So I'm going to do this on, for each side. It won't take any time at all. There are some sparks here, so you're going to have uh, safety goggles on, that sort of thing. But once um, once I've got that done, then I'll take it to the vibrator sander. So hang on a sec here. Whoa, that's loud. Okay, so that feels pretty good to me. Um, I feel like I've changed it. It's really grabbing on my thumb, grabbing against my skin. Feels sharp to me. So now I'm going to take this over to the vibrator sander and finish it off a little bit. So here, the trick with the vibrator sander is you have to keep it in place. So I've got a, again, this is sort of a yard sale type deal, but i got a vise. And uh, I have it uh, sort of just screwed down into my workbench here. Um, you can use any sort of vise that's wide enough. And of course, this is a circle, so it's not ideally suited. And you don't want to put it on there too hard or you break it. Um, but for the most part, well, you get it in there nice and flat. And you tighten it up. But not too much, so you don't want to break it, right? Okay, so that's in there. And now you've got your different uh, pieces of uh, paper cut out, you know, from the... So you got these cut out from the big sheets, right? You just cut these out to size. I'm going to start with the 400. Right, put that on. Just they just fit in like this. And the great thing about the vibrator sander, it's it's nowhere near as dangerous as the, the belt sander. Belt sander is kind of dangerous. You can get sort of tied up in it, entangled in it, and so on. But uh, as long as you're careful, you should be all right. Okay. Again, we got the uh, wet dry, so we can create a bit of a slurry. You want to have this on as tight as you can. The actual paper. Then we just work our way back and forth. I like to sort of, I know it's better to push a knife, but I find you, you're less likely to cut this uh, if you um, draw. Instead of, instead of pushing it forward, you sort of, you know, what I do is I basically, I, I push down, I put my finger, put my four fingers right where the edge is. I push down it and pull it towards me. And I put my thumbs on the edge and push it away. Forward, away, right? And I just do that and then I'll you know, hold it flat a couple times to clean it up a little bit. I'll just do that a number of times until it feels right. <laughs> and then I'll switch to the 600 grit. All right, so just to explain what I'm doing here, because I'm, I'm going sort of like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then I'm doing a little bit like this sort of thing. So when I, when I go this one, two, three, I'm pushing down, I'm holding up the edge here so that it's that dime's width off, and I'm pushing down and I'm pulling it towards me. You know, and all the while, this the vibrator standard is it's going like this, so it, <coughs> it's, it's sort of coming at this from all kinds of different random angles. So... Um, yes, if you pull towards yourself while you're sharpening, you're more likely to create a burr. But that's when you're using a sharpening stone or those wooden blocks. This here thing is a vibrator sander, so it's all over the place. So the direction I'm pulling in it doesn't matter so much because you can't see, but while this thing's vibrating, it's hitting the edge from all kinds of different angles. So the rules are a little bit different. All right? You, you can get one of these for like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, right? Depending on the brand. Anyway, that edge is starting to feel 
uh, a lot better. I'm going to work on this a little bit more and then I'm going to go to the 600. So it's starting to look good, right? Starting to get, uh, I don't know, I think the edge, oh yeah, I get, <laughs> you can feel the difference. That's why you can just feel with your thumb the difference, right? That is getting to be a sharp edge. But we're still not done, because, so we've done something resembling uh, like a hone, and I could take this really old, um, you know, from this point on you might want to do things sort of by hand. I could take this really old um, piece here, which almost has no, um, <laughs> almost nothing to it, right? And I could pull it towards, pull it towards like that. Again, maintaining that dime's width um, angle. You just put it flat, then lift it up a bit. Flat, then lift it up a bit. Flat, then lift it up a bit. Alright, so we're pretty good, but now the stage, the most important thing to putting a really sharp edge in a knife. I mean, if you're just going to use it in the kitchen, right, cutting meat and vegetables, I think just taking it to a hone like this will be sufficient. Like that. Maybe three or four shots aside. Three or four shots aside, we should be at our. See how that's cutting the paper? Beautifully now, right? Right? That wasn't the case earlier. It certainly wasn't performing like that. Okay, so we're already at a stage here where we're we're good for, you know, we're good for kitchen for kitchen use, right? We've got it, we've got it the way we've got it the way we want it. We've definitely improved this knife a lot, and this took minutes, right? Five minutes sort of thing, right? But just for that extra bit, we take it to this drop. All right, so here just this is the corner of my workbench, and I just got this belt nailed into the edge, right? It's just hanging here like this. Now you got to get this stuff called a uh, stropping compound or you know uh, I'll, I'll put it on on uh, I'll put it up on the screen. I can't remember exactly what this stuff is called, but it's basically a you know blah, a stick of, of minerals and stuff that uh, very fine abrasives that uh, help with stropping. Uh, I've often thought uh, there's no reason to think toothpaste wouldn't work well for this, but um, I might have read that somewhere. But the toothpaste would not be good for the leather, right? This has oils in it, so it's okay with your leather. Now all we want to do is just bring that up, bring it down. So we're, we're not bringing it to a 90 degree, we're just pulling it along. We're maintaining that same angle that we had on the, on the hone, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, sharpening stone. That same angle with the blade, we're pushing down, holding this tight with our hand, right? We're pushing down a little bit. And we're, we're holding it on a slight angle and trying to, you know, go, go as fast as you can maintain control. Now with a uh, pocket knife, you have to be careful. If you hold it like this, there's a chance it'll close on you, which you don't want. So the way I, I get around that is I hold my finger pretty close to the top of the blade. And that should, same, I put my, when I'm up here, I hold my thumb against the blade. And I find that keeps it from closing. And you just... Instead of going like really fast like you see in the movies sort of thing, you just do it very slowly and, and methodically, very carefully. Like that. Maybe 10, 20, I mean there's lots of guys that say you should do it a hundred times or whatever, but I find maybe 20, 20 times, 10, 20 times a side sort of thing. I just do it till I get tired of doing it pretty much. You may think what on earth could a leather belt possibly do to a piece of steel. But it's a combination of the leather, the angle you're doing this at, the speed you're doing this at, and the different uh, abrasive materials in this. All of that in combination is just removing whatever fine burr there might be at the edge of your blade. All right, so here we are. We've got our, our, our final blade. We've stropped the heck out of it, and uh, you know we're 
we 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 did not have this <laughs> we did not have this edge before right that's that's about as good an edge as you can get in a knife good an edge as I can get in a knife it took minutes using a, um, a belt saw or a, a belt sander and a vibrator sander and an old belt with a, a five dollar stick of um, whatever that's called stropping compound or whatever um, do you need a belt and belt sanders are quite expensive there's a cheaper kind you can buy this is a cheaper way to do it right these kind of this is just a craftsman not you know top of the line or anything like that but it's a belt sander right and uh, all you have to all you'd have to do is is put this in a vise or find some way to you know, attach it to a table you, know, you can be clever and ingenious with this sort of thing um, but as long as you could get that stationary and flat I could see putting some sort of strap over here, maybe some duct tape, or I don't know. It, it wouldn't be too hard for me to figure out a way to fix this to a table so it wouldn't move. So I could just plug it in and use it like a belt sander, right? Right now you get this on the table, you can work your knife on it. So, you know, just another, you know, you could buy a cheap belt sander, now you've got a belt sander you can use, you can sharpen knives till your heart's content. Or, you know, maybe a, you know, a 120 grit uh, 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 belt last years and years and years and years and years and years and uh, you know le learn to do this using your your old knives and your cheap knives or some old rusty piece of junk you pick up at a yard sale and you take that rusty old piece of junk and turn it into something uh, exquisite right let me show you so I mean here's a here's an old knife I got <laughs> this was pretty crazy but I got this at a yard sale for um, you know a dollar or something like that I can't remember now and uh, I you know I changed the shape of this blade and put an edge on it and uh, I haven't honed this for a while for my home now just for safety's sake let's do this I don't know what kind of edges on this right now but not bad right and here's another one I got one of these uh, uh, Solingen knife a couple bucks at a yard sale right and uh, Again, I'm going to run it over this because I don't know what I was using this with last. Then once you put a good edge on something, all you got to do is do this. One, two, three. Take it to the strop and you bring that edge back. Right? You don't have to take it to all these different blocks and sanding. and You might have to do that once a year, once every two years, whatever, depending on how hard you are on that knife and what kind of stuff you're using it for. If you're whacking stuff it with all the time and you're being really mean to the blade, um, yeah, you're probably going to have to bring the edge back a lot. Or if you're cutting, you know, cutting on top of stuff that isn't soft like wood or plastic. If you're cutting on top of a, you know, like, like with your kitchen knife. If you're cutting on top of one of those useless uh, glass cutting boards, don't use those. Right? If you're pulling it across a plate or you get a big pizza and you're cutting it on the top of the pizza, the metal pizza thing, you're going to wreck your blade. Don't do that. Um, so if you're good to your blade, it'll last a long time. But yeah, even this thing, this, this was just a rusty piece of junk. Didn't even have a handle on it when I bought it. And now I get this nice, you know, nice sharp knife, right? So, I hope I made my point. Knife sharpening, it's not rocket science, <laughs> right? Uh, there is a bit of science to it. Oh, the burr. I was going to talk about the burr, right? So, uh, right? You're trying to bring the edge to a fine point, right? But when you're sharpening it, there's going to be this little thing called a burr. Circle that. At the end. See the thing I've circled there? A burr. Right? When you use that knife, if there's a burr, the burr will get pushed over. I'm like I'm showing over here. Right? The burr will get pushed over. And the knife will lose its edge. So what you're doing when you're taking a hone to it, or in, and when you're um, taking the uh, strop to the edge, there, there's far more sophisticated explanations of this. I'm really, um, you know, uh, massacring the explanation of this. There's better explanations out there, but it's not enough just to use the the, the rough edge to make the knife feel and perform like it's sharp. If you don't remove that burr, that is just almost like a little foil of material at the very end of the blade. It'll get curled over and your blade won't work right and also damage more easily. 
Um, so, you, you know, if you, you get the knife till it's pretty sharp like this, but it's going to have a burr on the end. And then you use a hone like this, right? I remove most of it. Then you take it to the uh, strop. And that motion, that action will make that edge just like the edge of a Jedi's lightsaber. Um, and it'll make the blade let stay sharp for a lot longer and work a lot better. And, you know, it took me years to get to a point where I was willing to admit that the strop makes a difference. I used to just do this. For years, this is all I did. When I get, got things sharp and I'd use something like this. But the strop does make a difference. You can feel it when you're using your knife. It makes a big difference. And you can just use an old belt. You can go on an Amazon or eBay or whatever and order a strop. It's just a piece of leather that looks like an old belt. <laughs> and you get some sort of um, uh, stropping combat. I think you can use some combination. I'm sure there's old, in the old days, people didn't have to buy sticks of stuff from a uh, hardware store. They probably used some combination of ash and, I don't know, wax. I don't know what they would have used. I'm sure there'll be suggestions in the comment section of this video on what you can use as an alternative to that stropping compound. But, and lots of critiques about what I didn't, what, what I didn't say and uh, what a charlatan I am or what a philistine I am for not using a thousand dollars worth of Japanese whetstones. But um, for me, this is pragmatic and this works and I don't just get sharpening stones, I get these very useful things that put an edge on anything. Hi, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap. I'm trying to grow my channel and it's almost to a thousand subscribers and for those of you that don't know I've got a promotion on right now where if you're one of the first thousand subscribers you have a chance to win one of two Silky Gumboy 210 folding saws provided by the Newfoundland Knife Company. Uh, in addition to that uh, they've given my viewers a coupon code MGP2022. If you use that coupon code you get 10% off on anything they sell and they got a lot of different things to offer. They got knives, axes, saws, and uh, other outdoor, outdoor gear, and they've got good prices, and you know I like a good price. <laughs> so uh, check them out. If you want to help grow the channel, subscribe. Maybe win one of those saws. Thanks a lot.